Hello YouTube. My intended audience today is my fellow class members and any other people that are interested in assembly language using Atmel um, AVR boards. Um, so this is one of our homeworks. Uh, I'm going to go through a few problems with you real quick. Uh, first one is pretty easy. Load immediately, which means you can take uh, some number value in hexadecimal or binary and you can load it directly into the register. So for number one, uh, the value of 45 in hexadecimal would go in there. Um, you're going to see in the next problem that registers are really pointers to memory locations. They can they can act in like various ways, but they are mainly pointers to memory locations. So this one has a different command, load store. So you're finding this memory location and then you're loading into R26. So that memory location is 2003, which has a value of A7 in it, and then it would be here. This would be uh, become A7. And just follow my cursor if you can't see. I might put it in something else here in a sec. Uh, this is loading uh, R26 and Z. And all these loads are very similar, but they have like slightly different um, things. Like, for example, Z is always going to be your last uh, memory location, I think. It's going to be, well, I know what the answer is and how to explain the answer anyway. All my, ans all my answers are to the best of my knowledge, but they're not 100% right, but uh, I think they're helpful. So we're loading into R26Z. Z is 2001, as you can see here. So if we go to position 2001, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that has the value of AA. So R26 would then have uh, AA in there. Uh, and then for number four, this is not a post increment of three. That does not exist, I don't believe. This is a um, three positions away from Z. So for R26, what we're going to do is find Z which is 2001 and that has a value of AA right there and we want three positions um, forward from that if you want to think of it that way so it'd be one two and three so uh, R26 would get and then get 32 so moving on in the worksheet um, those are pretty similar um, I'm gonna move on to some of the more interesting ones like uh, let's do 14 here uh, we're loading immediately into R30 with this value of 0, 03. So R30 will then have a 0, 03 here. Um, that's one of the differences between the loads. Load immediate means you'd go directly to register and change the value in the register. So now we're loading R26 into R26 value of Z. Well, the value of Z is now changed because we just loaded directly into that register. So Z is now 2003. So 2003 is A7, so A7 would go on a 26. Um, I had a request to do one for flags, too. This is an interesting problem. Let me do this problem, and then I'll do a problem about flags. Uh, let's see. So we have load 26 and this memory location here. So I found the memory location, which is F3, and I load that into R26. So then this here would be F3. And then I'm ending that immediately with 0F. If you remember from digital systems class, when you add something, uh, if you had two binary numbers, you would need both numbers to become one, so that digit still stays a one. So uh, what that's doing essentially is uh, R26 now is the value F3. If you add that immediately with 0F, you would be left with 03. So R26 is now 03, and then you're copying that into R28. So now you have uh, 0, 03 here. Uh, and then we are loading R into R27 the value of Y. Y points to 2003, which is A7. So A7 would then go into R27. A little confusing, but uh, I think after you do a few of these and you wrap your head around the fact of moving information back and forth from registers to memory locations, it, it becomes much more fluid. And uh, it's. Um, I don't know what the word I'm looking for, instinctual, I guess, gut instinct. Okay, so now let's do one of these flags. Um, 
ignore number 19, I believe that's a typo in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Number 20. So we have the command to break not equal, and it's asking if we should jump based on these flag values we have here. Uh, okay, so don't think of this as when you're in C. What you need to do for these problems is go directly to your manual, um, which I have the at mail manual here. I'm not sure if you can see all of it, but I'm going to go down to the very end where it has the uh, nomenclature and instruction set summary. Uh, so in this PDF, it's 429. And we had break not equal. So I'm going to find that command. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in for you guys here. Uh, break not equal is here. You can see that it uses the zero flag right there. Uh, oops, sorry. Messed everything up. Break not equal uses a zero flag, does not set any flags. So we're looking specifically at the zero flag. Uh, so if I go back to my browser here, and we're looking at 20, you can see the zero flag is indeed zero, and I'm going to switch back here, sorry. Uh, branch not equal, if Z is zero, then you jump. So Z is indeed zero, so then you would jump in number 20. Uh, number 21 is using the same command, so we're going to look at the Z flag again. Z is still zero, so you still jump. It doesn't care about the carry flag, even though it has a 1 in it, it doesn't really affect it. it that command only cons concerns itself with Z. Uh, so it's a break equal. We can go back to the chart. Uh, break equal right there. If Z is 1, then jump. So we go back here. Break equal, Z is 0, so we don't jump. So number 22 is do not jump. And, okay. and then we have break less than. We go back to our assembly sheet. Sorry for doing this so many times. I'm almost done. Branch less than. Um, it's right here. You have an immediate or. An immediate or means one or the other. You cannot have both. So both of those are one, then it will not jump. It has to be n equals one or v equals one. It cannot be both. So going back here, I'm concerned with n and v. You can see that n is 1 and v is 0, so that satisfies the condition, so then we would indeed jump. Uh, you might have questions like, what exactly are these flags? Uh, C is a carry, so whenever you're doing addition or subtraction and you need to carry a number in, in hexadecimal or binary, you need that flag would then be set. Z is the 0 flag. If you subtract something, which normally it always subtracts to compare it, uh, and you have a 0 as an answer, that flag would then be set. So when there's a 1 there, that means there was a 0. It's kind of confusing, but I think after you uh, maybe listen to me talk about it a little bit, it might make more sense. N is a negative flag, so if the answer is indeed negative, <coughs> excuse me, uh, it would be 1. Uh, so showing that's negative. V is for overflow. One of the reasons I didn't put an O there was because they might confuse it with a 0. Overflow is when uh, the value you get goes over negative 128 or positive 127, I think. I'm not uh, sure on those values, but they're, I mean, it's between somewhere close in that range. If it's over that range, then the overflow flag is, flag is set. S is for signed. Uh, H is for uh, half carry. T is for... Um, uh, I don't remember what T is for. I don't remember what I is for either. But you can always look those up in the um, the manual here, and it's it's actually in here in page like thirteen, I think. It's like eighteen. Uh, yes, T is bit copy storage. Never want to guess that from T. Um, I is global interrupt enabled. So we learned about those a few days ago for global interrupts. Um, and let me do one more since I have 10 seconds left. Uh, eh, I don't have enough time. Alright, on to the next video.